thinking about the science of reading, right? First of all, that word gets thrown around a lot. <laughs> and and I try to keep bringing people back to it's it's the evidence, right? And and there is this massive library of evidence. And so when I think about the science related to adolescence, I often say it's different in the science for elementary students. And what I mean by that is um, thinking about studies that have included, like many of yours have, middle school and high school students, you might find a different emphasis, right, to the Fab Five or the Fab Seven, um, and how you might incorporate those for students who have already been in this um, kind of process of learning to read. Do you think that's a, a fair statement? And do you think it's helpful for people, especially those teachers in the upper grades, to be, if they are going to incorporate some things into their content area teachers, can we think about what research says might be most impactful for that age range of students or that kind of um, learning profile? Yeah, let me also back to the science of reading, say, you know, I agree with you, Liz, it is, you know, it's the evidence base and it's the research base, but it's also the current evidence base and the current research base. And there are things that we are still learning. We will learn. We should expect as educators and teachers that there will be new information for us and yes, new things it's not static or will. finished. Yeah. <laughs> So sometimes, and there are certainly areas, you know, you've named some of them in, in the early elementary grades, particularly and teaching kids, you know, how to read print and change it into language um, that we have, you know, more, you know, so much in decades and decades of um, consistent research on. But nevertheless, we still may learn something new in that area. You know, we and, and there are certainly areas, uh, fluency and com reading comprehension that I can guarantee you we're going to learn, you know, more information about. And so I, I I absolutely love that we're talking about the science of reading, that we're talking about implementing that evidence. But I want to make sure that, you know, everybody continues to expect that we're going to learn more. And it doesn't mean that what you did before was was wrong. We have learned some additional things and let's let's put that, you know, into our instruction. Um, but. I, I do think that, yes, there, Sharon talked about some of these earlier, that there are some areas that you have to think about with older adolescent readers um, that maybe don't come into play with reading. They are all interconnected, um, though. You know, some of the language um, reading comprehension areas that might be more of an emphasis or that we need to think about with older readers are still connected to the younger grades, too. And it's important that we as teachers and educators can see that full picture. So even if I am the first grade teacher or the first grade reading interventionist, and I'm, you know, working the, the problem at hand or the intervention at hand is helping these students decode this text, keeping their language, their vocabulary and their comprehension of language at a high level through listening comprehension or oral vocabulary or those types of things is equally important because down the road, we want that still at a high level. You don't wait till seventh grade to say, oh, okay, they have low language. Let's start, you know, to fixing this. Um, um, and maybe that happened because they couldn't read, you know, the more complex text until later in their life. But they, we have avenues to keep those, those areas at high levels when students are younger as well. And so I think all educators need to have that full picture. It, it all flows together, even though, yes, interventions um, may have different components. And some of them that Sharon talked about are, you know, other areas, psychosocial areas that may come into play when you've struggled with something for so many years or had to work at such an intensive levels for so many years. You may have other areas like mindset or anxiety or those kinds of things that um, become more emphasized parts of interventions as well. Um, but I'm curious what what you would also say, Sharon. Yeah, you know, um, the nice thing about the word science, the words science of reading is that it trips for all of us a bunch of stuff we want to say. 
like <laughs> and I go okay this is what the science of reading is not and this I mean it really pushes me to want to do a lot of clarification and so um one of the things that it, it makes me want to say is you know the science of reading is being touted as being indicative of like how much you teach in terms of phonics or phonemic awareness and there's this sort of notion that every single student needs the same amount and it's a lot and actually what we know is that there's really a lot of variation in how much phonemic awareness students need in order to access because that's what it does it allows them to access the various other components of reading and for some students they acquire phonemic awareness and put it to work in terms of phonics and word reading really quickly like a couple of hours distributed over a course many lessons now some students need more but to think that the science of reading means that all students need the same amount every day is really to me like a scary idea and I think we're um, close in some places to prescribing um, what these components should look like for all learners. And the science of reading is clear on this. Customization is important as we think about learners and their needs.